How to find an apprenticeship. This is one for the young people. And you know what? It don't even matter about your age, you know. I know a man. I worked with a man. 29, 30 years old, you know. A man started an apprenticeship in his late 20s. He was basically 30 years old. So it don't even matter how old you are, innit? Now, I can talk from experience about getting an apprenticeship. I'm a fully qualified electrician now, but I weren't always a fully qualified electrician. I went to school, I went to college, started the electrical course, and now I'm an electrician. Now, this video is not solely for electricians. It's not even solely for people in the construction industry. It's a bit more electrical biased, but if you're in the construction industry or you're outside of that, you can still use these steps. It will help you. Step one. We're going to start from school. We're going to start from year 11. Last year of school. Study. Do your best to get the highest and most grades possible. So this is the GCSE grading table. On the left, you've got the new grading structure. And on the right, you've got the old grading structure. Now, this makes me feel old because when I was in school, we used to go by the old grading structure. The highest was an A star and the lowest was a U. And our teachers always told us, the lowest grade we should try and achieve is a C. Nowadays, it's a four. So you should try to achieve your highest, but the lowest you should want to achieve is a four in every single subject. So if you're doing maths, English, science, drama, PE, whatever your subject is, try and get at least a four or a five. If unfortunately you don't, then you may have to start at level one. But at the same time, you get to spend an extra year mastering the thing. So, for example, I got five A star to C's. I was allowed to start my electrical course at level two instead of level one. But when I started my level two course, there were some guys that started at level one. Yeah, they'd been on it a year longer, but they had more experience than me. So it can work both ways. But value your time. Yeah, value your time. It's better off that you start at level two than start at level one. Step two, apply for a course at college. So go onto the internet and find a college that's close to your home, preferably. For this example, I'm going to use Barnet and Southgate College. Go to courses. Now, you personally, you may want to become a hairdresser. But for this example, I'm going to use construction and plumbing. Now, you may want to become a bricklayer, dry liner, carpenter or electrician. Whatever course you want, select. And then apply online. Step three, attend every class on time. None of this, uh, class starts at nine, but I'm a roll in there at 10.30 a.m. No attend every class on time value your time value your studying time because you know what if you mess around it's going to come back to bite you you know step four study your textbooks give yourself the best possible chance of passing your exams first time don't be like these men throughout the whole year they don't even look at their textbook one time until the night before the exam you will fail i know man standing outside the exam room studying you serious I'm not saying throughout the year, every night, you have to be studying your book for five hours or two hours. Half an hour every night. Half an hour every other night. Just look through your textbook. You have to make these things like your holy bible, you know. Like, for me, I'm an electrician. This is the BS7671. This is basically like the electrician's bible or whatever. Right? Yeah. To pass an exam, you need to know this book. Not inside out, but you need to be familiar with the book. Just navigating throughout the book. So study your textbook, man. It, it will help you. You don't want to be like these man retaking exam for the fourth time. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Step five, start looking for an apprenticeship. And I'm going to show you how. So go to the apprenticeships website and select the apprentices tab. Scroll down the page and there's a section called real stories. Find out how becoming an apprentice changes lives. Don't worry about that though. You're listening to a real story right now about how becoming an apprentice can change your life. So forget that. Browse apprenticeships and click browse now.
So you can select what industry you're in. For this example, I'll use construction, then enter your postcode, for example, N9. Then you will come to the results page and it will show you all the jobs that they have in that radius. So apprentice gas engineer, apprentice commercial plumber, apprentice multi-trade operative, And if you're interested, create an account. You can find an apprenticeship at gov.uk. <laughs> I actually discovered this whilst I was making this video as well, so I never knew about this back in the day also. So you learn every day. Select search. One thousand one hundred and seven apprenticeships in your selected area. Now this is across all fields. Nursery, science technician, accounts. But it's just to show you how many apprenticeships there are actually out there. Business, recruitment, teaching assistant. Nursery again, recruitment consultant, sales assistant, apprentice pharmacy assistant. Dental nurse. Hairdresser. Dental nurse again, dental nurse. You can be more specific. Select electrician, same thing again, same postcode N9. Four apprenticeships in the selected area. And obviously they'll list the main duties, which will be the basic stuff, wiring and that. Again, another example. Annual wage, 13,416 pounds per year. So that's over a thousand pounds per month. And if you want to apply for the role, select apply now. You can also go onto your college website to find an apprenticeship.
If you are looking for an electrical apprenticeship, you can go on to the NIC EIC's website. The NIC EIC are an organization within the electrical field. Type in your postcode. So for example, N17, N17. And it will come up with a list of contractors in the surrounding area. You can either call them direct or send them an email. And there are literally hundreds of companies on this website. So you're spoiled for choice. And the same applies if you're looking for an apprenticeship in gas engineering. Go to the Gas Safe website. Enter your postcode, for example, W12. Again, you have the option to call them direct or send them an email. In my opinion, if you want to learn to become an electrician, plumber, carpenter, the best type of company to work for is a company that carries out domestic contracted works. Who else is better than your local council? i done my apprenticeship with Haringey Council and it was the best apprenticeship ever. So yeah, this is me outside my office on Broadwater Farm eight years ago. So I was 20 years old at the time when I was working for Homes of Haringey. So in London, there are 32 councils. That's 32 opportunities to obtain an apprenticeship. I want you to get each and every one of those councils numbers and call them and ask for an apprenticeship vacancy. Long thing, right? Don't worry, I've already done all the hard work for you. I've got all the numbers right here. In London, besides local authorities, Enfield, Haringey, Hackney, Wolven Forest, Camden. There are housing associations which also provide accommodation for people. Here is a list of all of the housing associations that operate within London. Call each and every housing association and find out what maintenance company they use to carry out works. So for example, you may call up Notting Hill Genesis and ask them what company they use for their maintenance and repairs. They may tell you they use Axis, Purdy or Mears. You will then call up either Axis, Purdy or Mears and ask the company if they have any apprenticeships going. Let's say throughout your level two, you've tried, you've made the effort and you can't seem to find yourself an apprenticeship. Don't give up. It's not over. You may have to change your course structure though. So before you start your level three, I would opt for the evening course. So during your level two, you was doing the day course. Level three, opt for the evening course, which gives you free time during the day. From there, Get a job on a construction site as a mate, whether it's plumbing, plastering or electrical. When you're working as a mate, you're basically like an apprentice. You're working with qualified people and they will help you to gain the relevant skills and knowledge. But Jay, how do I become a mate on a construction site? If you are a non-electrician, i.e. plumber, carpenter, plasterer, no matter your skill level, you need to obtain a CSCS card 
in order to work on a construction site. But first of all, you need to undertake a CITB health and safety test. And it looks like so. Now the CITB health and safety test is a 50 question exam. You can find examples of mock tests here. Once you have sat enough mock tests and you're comfortable that you can pass with flying colours then apply for the real thing. Once you pass your exam and you have your certificate through the post then apply for the CSCS card. And here's an example of the CSCS card form. And here's what a CSCS card looks like. Once you have a CSCS card, here is a list of recruitment agencies call every single recruitment agency on the screen. Register as a mate. You could be a plumbing mate, carpenter mate, plaster mate or painting mate. Once you're registered, if any work comes up for a plumbing mate, carpenter mate, plaster mate, they will send you details, i.e. there is a job in Holborn on a construction site for four weeks. Are you interested? And they will give you the rates. It is very beneficial to become a mate on a construction site. Once upon a time, I met a man whilst I was working at Tottenham Football Ground. He is not an electrician. He is not aspiring to be an electrician. He's never even sat in an electrical classroom before. Yet, he was paid £15 per hour to stand around and help electricians. So to work on a construction site, as an electrical mate, you need to go onto the ECS website and go to card types. Scroll down the page until you find the electrotechnical tab. Select electrical laborer. Scroll down and select find out more. So there's two routes, route one and route two. Route one, if you already have a level two electrical qualification, then all you need to do is pass the ECS health and safety and environmental assessment. This is an example of the ECS practice test. After you've practiced enough with the mock exams, on Google type in ECS Health and Safety and Environmental Assessment. Now this will show you locations of where you can sit the assessment.
There are many venues across the country, but here's one in London. Alternatively, if you do not possess any qualifications, you have to go down route two and you have to complete the CITV Health and Safety Awareness Site Safety Plus course. And it's very similar to the previous mock exam I showed you. This course will cost you £150. Sounds like a lot of money, but it will be worth it one day. After you complete the course, you will need to contact agencies and register with them. Once you've done that, then you can go and apply for an ECS labourer's card. Step six, stick at it. Do not be one of these guys. One minute here doing carpentry, then accounting, then sports science, jumping around from course to course. Don't get it twisted. I don't like being an electrician, but I stuck at it. Now I've got three cars, right? I'm selling two of them, but I've got three cars. I've got a motorbike. I've got my own property. I've got a studio flat in Egypt. I'm buying a third property at the moment. All because I stuck at something that I don't even like. Being an electrician pays really well. £200 a day. £250 a day. Easily. You will never be broke being an electrician. And if people are broke as electricians because they're not managing their money properly. Stick at it. Trust me. It pays. Step seven. Keep making progress. Just because you're qualified, it's not the end of the road. You need to keep on furthering your knowledge and your skills. Me personally, I became a fully qualified electrician. Then I decided, you know what? Let me become an electrical tester. So now I can test other electricians' work. Then I decided, you know what? Let me become an electronic engineer. I went to uni and studied electronic engineering. Whilst I was at uni, I started a vending machine business. Always got to keep progressing in this world. If you're a plumber, don't stop there. Become a gas engineer. So that's how you find an apprenticeship. Stay wise.